Hi guys, we're here, Vaping One, and today we review the Floud. Time and time again that I was back, my nerve really did come back, um, but I'm back again, and uh, let's hope this time it's for good. But enough of the small talk, let's get to the star of the show, the Floud Atomizer. Right, the Floud Atomizer uh, built, developed, designed and manufactured right here in Malaysia. It's a 22 millimeter dripping atomizer. I have it right now in bottom feeder mode running on the octopus mods and it didn't initially come as a bottom feeding atomizer. It was just designed as a dripper and from my conversations with the modder, it really was uh, born out of the desire to create a really competitive local made dripper and this was in the time where drippers like the MFT, the Narda, they were the king of the dripper game, right? So the Flout Atomizer does come with some really interesting design aspects and one of them is that it only comes with one single air hole. It's capable of running single or dual coil but it only has one air hole and that's because it was designed uh, around the theory of vortex or rather the sort of um, vortex airflow theory, right? And what that means is that airflow comes in and it doesn't hit the coil directly as a traditional dripping atomizer would. Rather, it comes in at an angle, circles around the chamber and comes up. And what that is supposed to do is to create a really maximum flavor sort of vape. Um, as the name suggests, the flower is the combination between flavor and cloud. And I've got to say that so far, I'm really satisfied with the results and I believe that it does deliver on its promise. I do run the flout uh, not with the whole airflow open but more of a three-quarter open and that's just a personal preference but even with the airflow fully open you won't get huge huge clouds uh, as you would on something like let's say the tsunami or uh, what else a clouds bro maybe something like goon right but what you do get is a nice balance between clouds which are sort of cloudy enough for my liking but you also get a very rich and intense bit from this now um i'm not going to talk that much about it rather than give you more of the technical specs right so it's 22 millimeter in circumference height wise i'm just going to flash it across the screen right um and it's made out of 316 stainless steel and that means that it's a really sturdy atomizer truth be told i've dropped this a couple of times in fact i even dropped it on a tar road and instead of denting it just left some surface scratches which can be buffed up so that's really quite a uh, interesting or rather a good testament to the materials that are being used um okay enough from me right now let's head down and do the close-ups and i'll show you how to build it it's really easy okay Alright, so we are now up close and personal with the Flout Atomizer. And first things first, you know, it comes in this really nice brown box. It's a big, generous box with the word Flout written on top. Uh, it says that it's a combination of the words flavor and cloud, uh, which, you know, make up Flout. Right, uh, inside the box, you will get the Flout Atomizer. And it comes default with this um, white sort of Teflon drip tip. Yeah. I have the BF pin installed right now, but default it comes with a gold-plated brass 510 pin. Inside the box is the bubble wrap comes in, that's the serial number SN20. Um, there's a bag of spares, or no rather this is the bag that the flock came in, and there is a bag of spares here. The spares include uh, two spare screws and some o-rings and also there are these two really great photos of how to set up the flout whether in single or dual core mode right we'll put this aside for now and take a closer look at the atomizer itself okay so on the top of the atomizer you'll get the uh, Teflon 510 
it's actually a pretty nice drip tip uh, very unrestricted flow big bore uh, but the only problem that I have with it is that um, it's a little bigger than the actual neck of the flout I believe the newer versions or new releases have a slightly more flush drip tip but the version that I have uh, had this problem so um, anyway let's pull it apart and with the flout you will get a three-piece system you get the deck itself you get an outer ring and you get the top cap or rather the section with the slanted airflow piece here yep so as I mentioned earlier the airflow piece here is not directly milled in but it's rather slanted towards the side I believe it's towards the left side and that way when the air comes in it hits this way and it creates the vortex feeling within the chamber right working together with this outer sleeve when you slot it on you can adjust the airflow by just twisting that about I usually go for something like this with it half open right or a bit more than uh, a bit more than half yeah and this is the deck the deck comes with four uh, gold plated brass screws yep let's put this a bit closer four gold plated brass screws here yep Phillips head screws um, but like I mentioned they are brass so they do get they are a bit soft uh, you always want to use the right size Phillips screw head uh, when you are working with these screws because if you don't then you might damage them just like how I did right um, what else do I have to say about the deck nothing much actually um, oh one more thing uh, we know that this is made out of 316 stainless steel right and uh, I just want to show you some evidence of how uh, how beneficial 316 as a material really is check it out here at the base here at the back let's see yep yeah, right there and on the top these are all quite nasty scratch marks which uh, happened uh, when I actually dropped the flout on a tar road um, you know dropping things on concrete or tar roads they do leave dents and marks and in this case it left quite a nasty mark on the flout but um, I guess if it was made from any lesser material maybe uh, 304 stainless steel that wouldn't be just a scratch but more of a big dent there um, so in a way I'm glad that this is 316 that uh, I could probably buff that out or polish that out if I wanted to yeah okay so enough about that let's get on to the build and I assure you it's a real simple process All right so a call will go either this way or you go this way yep now uh, let's pull off a fair chunk of kantong I believe that should suffice really quickly I'm just gonna grab one end let's start coiling so I'm going for maybe a six loop so let's do one two three four five six all right pull that a bit let's snip this off easy as that let's get this mounted all right so normally you would pull this leg back either back towards your other leg or away from the other leg but with the flout you want to put it at a sort of 90 degree angle right that way 90 degrees and that's so you can build it that way all right across two screws so I'll take this away and show it to you you really want it to go that way across two screws and have the coil over the airflow or rather over the center right 
So first things first, I'm going to attach the negative. Let's just lock that down. And then attach the positive. And we're going to arrange the call so it sits in the middle, yeah, like so. And then you want to pull it up a fair bit. So I usually go for maybe about two to three millimeters above the grub screws, yeah. So let's pull it up a bit, make sure it's in the center. There you go. Let's get off the excess wire. And it's time to get a mod, a mod. It's time to get a mod to pulse this on, right? So I've got the flout on the mod now. Let's give this a pulse. See how it glows. Let's glue it a bit. Very uneven right now. So we just get our tweezers, push this together, and there you go, a nice even glow. We're ready to wake. Okay, so I've moved uh, the flout back to the octopus mod and as you can see, we got a nice even glow. Right, going from the middle out and outside back in. And since this is a 3mm build, it's quite chunky. I'm going to be using a fair amount of cotton in it. So I've got a strip of cotton bacon here. Just going to roll one end. And then thread it through the coil as you would normally. There you go. Not too tight, not too loose. Yep. And uh, there's a couple of ways you could sort of uh, tuck this cotton in, right? What I like to do is a sort of like a flower pattern where it crosses under the coil and covers up most of this, the, the sort of well. So I'm just going to snip this off and I'm going to turn this piece and tuck it under the negative leg here. Yeah. So this goes down under. All right, just tuck it in. And I do this method um, regardless whether it's on BF or non-BF. You just find that you know it makes good use of the well, helps to hold a few extra drops. All right, and with this end of the tail, I'm gonna do the exact opposite, turn it the other way, tuck it down there, and then trim off the excess. All right. And there you go. We've got our flout wicked up and ready to run. So let's push the squonk bottle a bit to get this juiced up. You can see the juice starting to saturate the coil, or rather the wick. Yep, and let's give that a test fire. 
lovely. Alright, let's move the camera back up and give this a vape. Okay, so you've seen the build and I'm sure you will agree that it's really, really an easy atomizer to build, especially with the sort of positive and negative uh, crossed in such a way um, that you really won't come up with an issue of, or rather you won't run into the traditional issues where things like uh, the post holes are too small for your wire. You know, I was using a 24 gauge build here and sometimes I do run clappings in it, no problem. You also won't face a problem where, um, let's say, you have to run the wires around the atomizer posts. Uh, the posts here are really nice, big and chunky. Again, I would say that I have run clackpins here, no problem. In fact, in fact, pardon me, the modder uh, li likes to run on alien captain wires all the time. And you will see that in the photos that come with the flout. So, Running builds here is not a problem. Why did I go for a single core build instead of a dual core build? Well, I firmly believe that if an atomizer can give you sufficient flavor uh, on a single core build, then there's really no need for a double core build. Uh, with a caveat, perhaps, uh, for example, something like the tsunami, you know when you're using that, you're just there to change clouds. And when you do that, when you do run the atomizer, you just want to have as much clouds as you can. So you will chuck in a dual core build there, no matter what. But with the flower, again, it's more of a flavor atomizer. And with a single core, I really find that I get enough flavor from it to uh, sort of have to worry about running dual calls, right? The second thing I want to say about the flower, and this is what I said really uh, early on in the video, is that I'm really impressed with the build quality. Again, it's using 316 stainless steel, and I know I'm like, sounding like a broken record, but I did drop this many times. If you know me, you know I'm a careless bastard, and I always drop my stuff. <clears throat> uh, you know, I've dropped other atomizers, things like the Heron. I have a big dent there. I've dropped all my K-Funds. I've dropped my Typhoons. They've all been dented. Okay, maybe it's because of the angle, but um, credit given where credit is due, the flout really is still perfect condition just some surface scratches so far right the third thing really i can't get over the flavor that i get from this atomizer i may go on a limb i might shoot myself later for saying this but i will go on a limb and say that this is one of the best sort of flavor atomizers that i've tried so far the vape simply is really really dense it's really rich um, and it does bring out all the finer flavors within your e-liquids on some drippers, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the airflow amount or I'm not building it in optimal way, let's be honest, right? But I don't get the intensity of flavor that I do get on the flout. Hmm, what else? I guess, I guess um, the likes far away the dislikes, but there are some dislikes about the flout too. Uh, first things first. There is a slight whistling on the flout. I know that a lot of people might not say they get whistling, but truth be told, I do. Let's give it a try. Well, right now it's not a whistle whistle per se. I guess it has something to do with the coil placement. If it's high enough, you won't get that intense sharp whistling. And um, I guess it is an indicator in a way that your coil is in the right place. When I first got it, I built the coil really low and I found that that gave me an overly hot vape, uh, a rather flatter vape and some really loud whistling. But after some discussions with the model, he told me to keep the coil high, right? I've got the coil pretty high up right now. Let's see if you can see that, right? It's much higher than the grub screw, right? Um, and I found that with the flout, you have to have the coil in a really optimum place. When you put the AFC on, you will see that the coil is pretty much aligned with the airflow. But, you know, building a dripper, you do tend to build it really low. 
and I find that when you build it really low, you also get spit back. So that's why I like to stuff the deck with more cotton and keep the color higher, right? So uh, that's one negative. It does take a while to learn how to build the flower. But once you got it, really spot on. The second negative probably is more of an aesthetic thing, which has been fixed in newer versions of the flower. Um, I know it's just nitpicking, but uh, I guess I have an issue with that. And that's this strip tip here. Yeah? No, no, if you can see it in focus, let's try and get it in focus. Yep. But the neck is that slightly thinner than the trip tip, and that sort of irks me uh, enough to want to swap this out. Now, I normally run this with a different drip tip. I run this with my Hellfire barrel, and even that isn't flush, but I guess the sort of illusion of the slots kind of makes me forget about it, right? I guess the uh, third and last negative really only applies to early owners, people like me and people before the most recent batch or the most recent release, and that is the uh, flout only ships with the normal pin. Um, yes, again, I'll say the new batches, they come with the bottom feeder pin. Now, for the money that you're paying, uh, the RRP is 550 Malaysian ringgit. Uh, that is the local RRP. You will have to pay additional shipping if you are overseas. But for 550 ringgit, you would expect that the flop came in a complete kit. I will sort of take a step back and not blame the model for missing that out in the beginning since he did not squonk at the time. And uh, I do claim a little responsibility for sort of poisoning him in the ways of the squonk. Um, but Honestly, credit to him, he did work hard and try and find an original way to push up bottom feeder pins later on. He didn't sort of rely on ready-made off-the-shelf bottom feeder pins to supply to the customers, but rather put in the research to find the right material uh, that was sturdy enough or durable enough to be a bottom feeder pin, a good bottom feeder pin for the flower. Um, so in a way, that negative did turn into a positive. I know that if you bought an early batch, you would have to pay a little extra just to get it shipped again. Um, but yeah, the reason I'm using that as a con really is because I'm so hard pressed to come up with negatives on the flout. Well, the good news is that the flout isn't really uh, one of those uh, unicorn inaccessible atomizers. You can get them actively now. Uh, just drop by the Facebook page. It's called Flout and Co. The and is the and sign, not the A-N-D. And uh, you will sort of find flouts going up uh, either in small batches, 10, 15 units, or you will see the occasion a quick strike. So if you want to get one, just head on to the page, uh, turn on your notifications, and you will get a chance to pick up a flout. It's not one of those uh, overly hyped up, overly limited production atomizers, right? And the uh, RRP is 550 ringgit. I believe that was sort of where the Snapdragon was and where the GP Dripper sits. Um, it's not really inaccessible. It is more expensive than the Hadley, but it's much cheaper than a lot of atomizers out there, right? So uh, do head on to the Facebook page and check it out. I guess uh, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while, so I am a bit rusty. Uh, sorry about that. Um, also, the upload shots might have been a bit messy since I am using a new rig um, and things are being shot upside down. So I'm still trying to get a hang of that. I promise I'll work on that on next videos, right? Okay, so till then, uh, this is Vaping signing off. I hope to see you soon.